Hey everyone. In this video, I want to dive into moving resources between subscriptions, between resource groups, and even regions. And that last one in particular, using the new Azure Resource Mover. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. And hit that bell icon to get notified when I release new content or do live events. So let's think about for a second. If I think about resources and subscriptions and regions, how do all these things fit together? So I can really think about, we have the idea of, sure, we have this great big region. And obviously, potentially, there's multiple regions. So I can think, hey, look, there's another great big region over here. So these are different physical sets of resources. Again, a region, remember, is that two millisecond latency envelope. And I often want to use different regions, maybe to be closer to where my customers are, for resilience if something happened to a region. So I can think about, okay, so I have here this kind of region one, and we'll say region two. Now, to actually leverage and create those resources, well, I have a subscription. Now I can think about, okay, let's take an example where I have kind of a subscription one. And maybe there's another subscription, kind of this subscription two. And I can really think about there's going to be this kind of line between them, just so I can work out, well, what's in each of those various regions. So I have different regions, I have different subscriptions. Now, when I create resources, well, resources have to live inside a resource group. So I could, for example, create a resource group, resource group one, and inside that I can create resources. Now, when I think about the actual resources themselves, there are dependencies between them. For example, if I actually think about, okay, I'll create a virtual machine. So I can think very, very simply, okay, easy. I have this virtual machine resource. But is it really just a virtual machine? Um, well, no, it's not. So a virtual machine actually has dependencies on other things. I can think about, well, I have a dependency, for example, on a storage account for my diagnostics. I have a dependency on one or more disks for my OS, for my data. I can think about I have a dependency on a network interface that is its own resource. Now that network interface card, well, it actually will go and link to a particular subnet in a particular VNet. And it may even have a public IP. So it depends on this public IP resource, which actually then has an actual physical IP address. So there's all of these dependencies between those different resources. Now, I cannot rename a resource group today. And there may be times where, do you know what, things have changed. It could be, hey, I used a certain region initially because maybe another region didn't exist. This wasn't there when I created these resources. Or maybe this didn't have certain functionality. Maybe it didn't have availability zones or certain types of resources. But now my needs have changed. I want to be able to go and actually move to that region. Maybe my data residency, my compliance requirements have changed. Maybe there's a merger acquisition. Hey, I've bought some other company. And yeah, I want to bring resources into different regions or want to bring resources between subscriptions. I may also just want to move resources between subscriptions, maybe because of restructuring in my company. Maybe it's now under a different department. Now, no, remember subscriptions actually live under this whole kind of management group structure. You have kind of your root AAD and you have kind of the root management group. And then I can create a whole hierarchy of management groups where the subs actually live. And I can move subs around the management group hierarchy fairly easily. So that's not in scope for this conversation. We're really focusing on, hey, I want to be able to move these resources to another region, 
or I want to move it to a different subscription. And obviously in the other subscription, there'd be a target kind of resource group. Or maybe it's just even another resource group in the same subscription. So we have all these different scenarios. Now, many resources are actually confined to a region. And if you're interested in that, I released a video just, I think, last week about why the resource is deployed to a certain region. So I can't just span these automatically between regions. Also note, some resources actually cannot be moved. For example, this public IP resource, that's metadata, but that actually then goes to specifically an actual IP address. Now, that actual IP address is bound to that region. I cannot move that. So if I want to actually go to another region, sure, the metadata of that public IP I can move, but it's going to get a new actual public IP address. The way the routing works, I can't move a public IP between regions. I would just get a new IP. Now, in terms of doing these actual moves, there's two types of move. Now, the Azure Resource Mover is really consolidating these together in terms of discoverability. There are two very discrete actual sets of move technology. I can think about, if I go over to this side, if I'm moving in this direction, so I'm moving between subscriptions or resource groups, this is an Azure Resource Manager operation. Because really what I'm moving is fundamentally metadata. I don't actually typically have to actually move physical things, bits on a disk or anything else. I'm moving metadata. Whereas when I'm moving between regions, if I'm going this way, it's actually a very different thing. So this is actually the Azure Resource Mover. So there are two different technologies However, to make it simpler to actually discover, they both kind of fall under Azure Resource Mover, but realize there's two very different things happening because this one, well, this actually can vary. And I'm going to get into more detail on that. But if you go and look at the portal, so firstly, we could just actually go and look, for example, at a resource group. So if I just quickly jumped over and looked at my resource groups, and I could, for example, look at my demo VM resource group. So what you'll actually notice, I have this option to move. Now I have to select something. So if I selected my virtual machine, now you can see I have my move and it's actually giving me, hey, look, I can move to a resource group, move to another subscription or move to another region. And it's helping me surface those different options. And if I select those, well, this is opening up the ARM kind of move resource option. But I can also, if I go Azure, if I type right, resource mover, this surfaces the three scenarios. I can see, hey, look, I can move resources to another subscription, move to another resource group, or move to another region. So I have these different options available to me. Now, I do want to call out, this is, I'm looking right now at the preview.portal.azure.com. This will become mainstay soon, but this actually brings all those three things together to really just help the discoverability of it. But we have these different paths, these different scenarios, depending on, hey, am I moving across subscriptions, moving across resource groups, or moving to another region. The important thing here, I cannot in one step go, hey, from a subscription in region one to a different subscription in region two. That is not possible. I would have to do two separate steps. Because remember, two different technologies really at work here. So if I wanted to move to another region and another subscription, step one, hey, I'll use Azure Resource Mover to move it to region two. And then after that's moved, then I'd perform another move to actually move it between subscriptions. So I cannot move between regions and subscriptions or resource groups in one operation. Um, if I want to go between subscriptions, 
it's two different separate operations I would perform. So that's kind of an important point just to realize, hey, there are those two different scenarios. So let's focus on, hey, I want to move a virtual machine. Now, there are multiple steps actually to this pro process. The first thing that's actually going to happen is I'm going to create kind of a move collection. So I can think about, hey, I have this move collection. You can think of this as a workspace for this move set of operations. Now, this particular collection is unique. It's really based around the subscription, so kind of sub one, and then the source and destination pair. So I'm thinking kind of region one to region two. If I also wanted to move something to region three, it would be a different move collection. So the move collection is really based around those three um, different entities, the subscription, the source region, and the destination region. And then all I'm essentially gonna do is put resources into that. So I'll say, hey, I want to add that VM into this move operation. Now, what that actually does at this point, it creates kind of a proxy resource in that move collection. Now, it's also going to add a resource group, because obviously I have to have a resource group uh, as part of that. So it's going to kind of add the resource group. So that's step one, and we can see that. So if I jump over, and I could say, hey, I want to move resources to another region, so move across regions. So I select the source region. So, hey, I know I have things in kind of South Central US. And let's say, sure, we move to East US too. So now I'm going to actually go and select resources. Now, in this case, I'm just going to select demo VM. Now, remember, as we talked about, there are things it needs to actually function. But this is kind of my step one. I'm just going to go and say, hey, I'm just going to add this virtual machine, hit next. It's telling me a few different things. So, hey, it's going to, hey, validate dependencies. Then I have to prepare, i.e., if it has state, and we're going to talk about that, I have to set up something to replicate that. Then I'm going to actually move, and then I have choices on what I want to do once it's moved. So I'm going to say, sure, go ahead and proceed. And that's going to add resources to the move. Now, at this point, that's going to take a little bit of time. But now I can go to my move options. And once that is actually kind of um, sunk in, I'll actually be able to see that resource. Obviously, I have to wait for this to finish. So while that's kind of going on, uh, I'll just kind of go back to what's going to happen next. So once I've done that step, I've created that, my next step is I actually have to work out well, what are the dependencies. So it's going to do a dependency check. Now, in that dependency check, it's going to say, hey, look, um, there's this NIC, there's this VNet, um, there's this disk. What of those things do you want to also include? And I can kind of check boxes. And it's going to show me top-level dependencies and also child dependencies as well if I select that. So I might say, well, yeah, OK, obviously, I, I do want to include the disk as well. Um, I do want to include kind of a NIC as well. But you know what? I don't want to include the VNet. I've got other things. Maybe in my target, so I've got this resource group over here, whatever that's called, I already have a VNet. I have a VNet there already. I have a sub there. Go ahead and connect it to that subscription. Because I can actually change certain configurations. I'll actually be able to modify the resource and say, hey, maybe I want to go to a particular AZ in that target region. Hey, use this existing resource over there. So there are things that I can actually tweak to control exactly what is there. Now, things like the storage account today, I actually cannot move across regions. And I can actually look at the documentation. So if we look at the documentation for a second, it actually shows us what we can move. So I can see here, OK, so we've got Azure VMs, even encrypted VMs and associated disks. So for these virtual machines, it would actually add to the dependencies things like Azure Key Vault, things like a disk encryption set. So it's going to understand those. So if I'm using Azure Disk Encryption, it will actually go ahead and do things like, hey, copy the key. 
it will create a new disk encryption set. So it's going to handle those things. Hey, okay, I can move NICs, availability sets, virtual networks, public IPs. Now, it says public IP addresses. Remember what I said, it can't move the actual IP. It can move the metadata, the resource object, but it will get a new IP address actually in the target region. NSGs, internal public load balancers, and Azure SQL databases. So those are the resources that I can actually move today. So let's actually see, has it found those dependencies yet? So if we go back over again, and I go and look at my Azure Resource Mover, and let's hit refresh. Okay, so there's my demo VM. Now notice it's telling me, hey look, it's calling out here, validate dependencies, and it's calling out issues you have not validated dependencies. So I say, okay, go and validate the dependencies. So it's gonna go through and work out what does this actually require? But also notice this destination configuration option. So if we look at the documentation, it actually goes into a lot of detail about what target destination settings you can modify. So things like the VM name, availability zone, SKU, vault, disk encryption set, networking resources. So hey, use an existing network resource in the destination region and public IP address SKUs, resource dependencies. There's a whole set of things that I can actually tweak, and that's for a VM. For SQL, there are also different options that I can actually modify. So I don't have to move it exactly as is. There are things I can actually tweak as part of that. Now, I realized I actually messed up. My VM wasn't running, so it never added the VM. So I have to, I just started the VM and added it, so my bad. I thought that was kind of weird what was going on. So I did the validate dependencies, and now it's obviously saying, hey, look, there, there are some dependencies, so you'd want to add some dependencies, because it's found there's things it relies on. So now I can do add dependencies, and it's showing me all of the things it's dependent on. So I say, hey, yeah, move the NIC. Um, I don't want to move the network. Um, yes, move disk encryption set. Uh, maybe that's all I want to move. Obviously, I need a resource group as well. I could add those dependencies in. So that's going to add all of those various things into my job. Now, if I go back now and look at that destination configuration actually of the VM, not the resource group, we can see, hey, I have options. I have things like the virtual machine, actual configuration. I could create a new virtual machine. I have zones. I can pick the SKU availability set. So I have options around what I can actually change. Let's see if I'm gonna do a refresh here. Okay, so now I have some of those other things as well. So I could look at things like, hey, the network interface. Hey, look, I can change those configurations around all of the different aspects of the resource. So that's the idea that it went off and actually found those dependencies. Now, the next thing I would do would be this prepare. Now, the prepare varies depending on the resource. Because as we think about, hey, look, there's this move, but there's this idea of resources that have a state and those that are stateless, i.e., does it have a data plane? For example, I can think about, well, a disk has state, it has content. So I have to get that copied over. A SQL database has content. I have to get that copied over. Whereas something like actually a network interface, something like an actual VM, they don't actually have state. The state of a VM is in the disk. So that's really an ARM template export and import to actually create those things. So when I say prepare, prepare will do different things. If it has state, for example, if it's a VM, then it's going to use ASR to actually now start replicating to a disk in the target region. If it was SQL, it's gonna set up geo replication. So there's different options if it has state if it's stateless, it doesn't really need to do anything. Now, once you've done that, once you've done the prepare and it's starting to get that, then I can actually do the initiate move. So initiate move 
actually does the failover. It would create the resources on this side and then shut down the source on this side. So that's the next step. We can see that in the portal. So hey, if I'd actually gone through and completed the repair, it takes too long to do here. Once the repair is done and it's doing that ASR replication or that SQL geo replication, then I would say initiate move. That would actually now do the failover. Now at that point, once I've done that move, I have two choices, discard move or commit move. So I can really think about, well obviously discard move essentially rolls it all back. It would delete the resources that it had created over here. It would delete those, went back here. Commit would say, hey, okay, I, I'm now, and I, I'm keeping this configuration. Optionally, it will now give you the option to delete source. By default, it will not. It will shut it down, it will not delete it. But if you want to, you can say kind of delete the source. You have to type in yes, make sure you're really, really sure of this. It would then actually go and delete that source for you as well. But ordinarily, if you don't do that, it will leave those resources stopped, but intact, they're over there. So that's really the steps that's what involved to use Azure Resource Mover. I can think about, hey, I create this move collection, I add resources to it, then I run the dependency check, it will work out, hey, what things I want. I can modify aspects of the configuration, I don't have to include everything. Then I do the initiate, if it has state, start actually doing that replication. Then I can actually do the initiate move, which does the failover, and then I either commit, keep it, or discard, delete that, roll back to over here, and then optionally, I can delete that source. It can do it for me, or I can say, no, no, I'll do it myself later on. So that's it. Again, the Azure Resource Manager is super powerful. It's literally gonna walk you through all of those steps. I add the resources, I validate the dependencies, I run the prepare to start replicating, I fail over with initiate move, and then I either fail back or commit, and then optionally, I can delete the source. And if I kind of change my mind, I can just say, hey, um, remove, I don't wanna do this anymore, uh, I'm not gonna proceed. And that's kind of it in a nutshell, so Azure Resource Mover, is really about that moving between regions, but it also helps in discoverability. It will facilitate and hook into the ARM kind of metadata move to move between resource groups or move actually being between subscriptions. But remember, if you wanna move between subs and regions, it's two steps. I firstly move between regions and then I can move between subscriptions. Uh, that's it, I hope that was helpful. If you are doing VMs, make sure you start them, which I, <laughs> It automatically shut down overnight and I'd forgotten. Um, but until next time, take care.